USA Wrestling's Gary Abbott, the Dean of Writers, joins us now. Gary, how are you? Doing really well, Scott. Thanks for calling. The Olympic team trials coming up April in Iowa City at famed Carver Hawkeye Arena. Everybody's eyes are turned that way, including the athletes that have qualified to date. We're talking about 63 men's freestyle, 56 women, and 63 Greco have qualified for the uh, for the Olympic trials. Anybody surprise you at this point? No, actually, it's been a pretty good uh, early part of our trials process. We've uh, published a series of uh, qualification standards, which... Uh, and I'd probably run a number of the events that are going to qualify our athletes. Majority of the athletes that are going to wrestle in Iowa City have been determined. Our major qualifier was held in uh, uh, Las Vegas in December at our U.S. Um, we're uh, in, in a position here where uh, the remaining spots are going to be difficult to get, and there's going to be a lot of competition for it. Uh, yeah. And we're really excited about uh, the athletes that are already in and the ones that are coming in. You talk about the remaining spots and how difficult it will be to get those spots. Where will those uh, uh, those opportunities exist? Well, we've got a number of events still ahead. This weekend is is a big qualifier on the women's side. The WCWA Women's College Nationals are going to be in Oklahoma City this weekend. Up to 30 spots in the women's field are, are ahead of us. Uh, we've got Armed Forces Championships coming up the next week where the champions in Greco-Roman can get a spot in the, in the trials if they haven't done that yet. We've still got a couple of other events. The NCAA championships, any of the NCAA Division I champions can go in either uh, the uh, freestyle or the Greco-Roman division. And then uh, the last chance qualifier, which is going to be coming up uh, the week before the trials in, in Iowa. One other women's qualifier, the university championships uh, end, of May, in, end of March in Oklahoma City. So there's still spots out there to have. Our women's have uh, women have been wrestling so well. Uh, you look at the performances of uh, talent like Alyssa Lampe and, and Whitney Condor and Helen Maroulis, of course, Allie Reagan. Um, are you as impressed as we are in the media uh, with uh, the talent that is uh, USA Women's Wrestling? Yeah, well, we've been third in the world the last two years, or uh, excuse me, three years, and that's really exciting for us. Uh, we want to be the best in the world. There's still a major step for us to all take in all three styles, and that's to qualify the weight classes. We have 13 weight classes not yet qualified. That includes uh, four in freestyle, four in Greco, and five in one. And uh, we'll have to do that in Dallas the first weekend of March at the Olympic qualifier. So once we qualify those weights, then you lead into the Olympic trials and figure out who's on the team. So uh, our women's team has done very well, but they still have five weight classes they need to get in Rio. So uh, the work is not yet done. You've seen some uh, great talent emerge or reemerge. If I say the names Iris Smith or uh, Randy Miller, what do you think of? Well, they're with the U.S. Army program. Both of them have been very successful. Uh, Randy Miller was an uh, Olympic bronze medalist in 2008. Iris Smith won a world title in 2005. Both are still battling. Uh, they're veterans, and uh, you'll see them in Iowa City at the trials. And another U.S. Uh, Army WCAP program member is Sally Roberts. Two-time world bronze medalist, again, a veteran. Uh, these athletes are still pursuing their Olympic dreams, and uh, you know all of them have qualified. They're in the field. Has there been a good partnership between the WCAP program and USA Wrestling in that it seems that if you're looking for uh, championship material, the WCAP program is a great place to look? Yeah, it's one of our top club programs. Uh, they win the Greco Nationals on a regular basis. Their women's team has enough stars on it that they do well at our national tournaments. Uh, they're putting athletes on world and Olympic teams, a uh, strong part of our pro program. Um, you know, we got a lot of people out there that are making a big difference uh, in uh, providing training opportunities for top wrestlers, and the, and the Army um, is one of the top ones. Obviously, they're going to fight for their Armed Forces team title next weekend in Seattle, uh, and we'll be streaming that on, on USA Wrestling's website. So you'll see the Army, Navy, Marine, and uh, obviously the Air Force athletes the, and Again, that event has spot. 
We're looking forward to it. Gary Abbott, our guest. Gary, we're going to switch up gears. Uh, we've, we saw the emergence of uh, an athlete that you and I covered in, at the collegiate level when he wrestled for the University of Minnesota. Where has Tony Nelson been? Well, Tony Nelson's a top heavyweight. I mean, he's got a very difficult challenge ahead of him to make our Olympic team. Obviously, Tervel delognev has been our man for many years. Uh, Zach Ray was on our world team last year. Uh, the NCAA champion, uh, Nick Wisdowski, uh, has beaten uh, Nelson in freestyle. But Nelson just came off a great performance uh, in Turkey, uh, took a silver medal. He's going to be a force in Iowa City. Going to be a force indeed. He looks lean and mean and quick at his weight. Uh, seemingly, he's recovered fully from the injury he suffered at the NCAA championships. But does he have it in him? to un unseat some of the guys that have been uh, doing, you know, the international style for a number of years. Yeah, we're very deep at heavyweight, and Tony's one of the guys who have a shot at it. Uh, clearly, uh, winning a couple NCAA titles makes a big difference in his life, and, and he's focused on freestyle. We see him at the training camps. He's getting great training up at the Minnesota Storm Club. And, uh, you know, again, there are so many athletes that are capable of making our Olympic team, but only one per weight gets to go. So it's the ultimate challenge, and, and I think Tony's really up for it. The legend of Jordan Burroughs continues. He won gold at the Yasser Dagu, which ups his record to 118-2. and two. It is simply amazing to watch. I know you're probably closer to it than most. What are your thoughts on Jordan Burroughs? Well, Jordan has set high goals for himself, and those high goals include being the greatest American wrestler ever. And obviously, uh, you know, it's going to take a little bit more time for him to do that. Uh, John Smith won six straight goals. But Jordan has a commitment to that, and every time he steps on the mat, is exciting. He's a great athlete. He's, he's great for the sport. Internationally, they love him. Uh, here in the United States, we take great pride in his achievements. Um, but as a along with everyone else, he still has to make the next Olympic team. So uh, Jordan has a focus and a mission right now. Uh, he's uh, getting a lot of publicity for our sport, and he continues to maintain a level of excellence that's, you know, historic. And, and we're really excited to be part of that, that journey. But, you know, as Jordan will tell you, he's not as to where he wants to be yet. He wants to keep getting better, and uh, certainly he's going to be challenged here and around the world every time he wrestles. Seems to me at some point there will be a whole wing dedicated to him at the National Wrestling Hall of Fame and Museum in Stillwater, Oklahoma. <laughs> it would seem to be worthy. Anyway, well, we're talking. Well, yeah, I mean, he's with the titles he has, an Olympic gold medal and three world titles, he's got the statistics to get in real easily. But uh, he, he's not looking at that right now. Um, is ahead of him, you know. He's still young, he's still healthy. He's still strong and he's still motivated. So, um, you know, the, we're going to enjoy seeing just how far Jordan can take this. Global Wrestling News, our guest is Gary Abbott from USA Wrestling. Gary, uh, final topic perhaps is the National Wrestling Hall of Fame and Museum. Every year you're there for Honors Weekend. They are closed at this time. They're scheduled to reopen again uh, this spring, uh, having been remodeled inside and, and somewhat outside. What are your thoughts on the history of our uh, of our sport and its uh, the renovation of its uh, uh, of its home? Well, I'm really excited to see the opening uh, of the new uh, re rehabilitated, re expanded, improved. Uh, call all all the words you want to. It's what they've done in Stillwater Hall of Fame is an impressive place. One of my favorite places to go. Um, I still see and learn new things every time I go, but this is going to be a brand new place, and they're going <coughs> to, excuse me, use technology to really bring out the history of wrestling, and and I just can't wait to to be able to witness that later this year. Um, they're closed now, but once they open, people need to make another visit if they haven't been there. Indeed, Gary Abbott, always good to talk to you. Thanks for your great work throughout the year, but we're ramping, ramping up, if you will, to the Olympic team trials and even further to the 2016 Olympics in Rio de Janeiro. i got to believe you're looking forward to going to Rio. Should be fun. Should be fun. Fun indeed. Follow Gary's work on themat.com. Follow him <coughs> on Global Wrestling News as well. For all of us here, I'm Scott Casper. Gary Abbott's been our guest. Gary, thank you. Hey, no problem, man. Be well.